Born to Beauty. Inspired by your wellness, unburdened by life, this is the path to finding the warrior within you. This podcast is for women of every shape, color, and style. It's about finding your inner beauty and finding the strength to battle the outside world around you. Take a break and sip some tea with me, Gwen Osborne, from teen mom to celebrity life and all the necessary trials in between. Hi, everybody. We are back. Welcome back to Tea with Gwen with me, your host, Gwen Osborne. I am so excited about today's episode because we have one of my special, beautiful, inspiring friends, and we have gone through so much together. We bonded through the pandemic, like (laughs) more than ever. I think this is when we found our special people in our lives. Um, So I want to introduce you to, I want to just, let's not waste any time. So my guest today is the beautiful, phenomenal Tanya Del Pozo. And you can also find her at Tanya Newbold. She is an actress of many things. I am not going to say the list, (laughs) but she's also a producer and a CEO of her own company, Del Pozo Jewelry. She's also now a public speaker and a life transformative coach. Did I say that right, Tanya? Yes, actually, that's perfect. Excellent. So Tanya's whole vibe is about uplifting, empowering everybody around her. She is an expert in resilience. And even after suffering through her own postpartum depression of having her daughter, she is this beautiful 13 year old teenager daughter. uh, She shifted her own pain into power and she used her producing skills to create a documentary that is now around the world in 200 countries to give everybody the information and their own power to get through it. So you can find her speaking her story across the world, filled rooms filled with thousands of people. And or you can just get her as a loving private coach for yourself to sit down with and she will take that time for you. She now has her jewelry line, Del Pozo Jewelry, which is also created out of love for nature. She loves connecting to the earth. And it's there's a new Sozo line. This is also delicately made, especially to proceed and benefit mamas and babies who have suffered and are also still suffering from their own PPD. You can go to tanyanewbold.com to check her out and you can book her for your next event on there. And let us know also, Tanya, where can we find you on Instagram and social media? On Instagram, you can follow me at Tanya Newbold. You can follow me, which is B-O-U-L-D just so people know. And also at Del Pozo Jewelry, at Spiritually Inspired Coaching, and as as of today, at Sozo Heart. Sozo Heart! Logo! And uh, got that up and running on Instagram. Thought I lost all my other accounts, but I found them. (laughs) Isn't that this world right now? We're like, where's it at? Where's that? Oh my gosh. And then you freak out. You're like, oh, it's right here. I see you depress these two buttons and then that one. Totally. (laughs) So tell me what it was that you first thought about this morning when you first opened your eyes. Well, considering my husband dropped a pen on the floor at 5 a.m. and woke me up, first thing I thought about was, what the heck is going on? And then Uh, from there, oh, but you know what? I love getting up early. I did not fall back asleep. I get up, I do my meditation. I've been listening to, if anyone wants a really cool 3D sounding app, Sync Tuition, mm. big fan. And they're like 24 minute, they're binaural beats and different things to raise your frequency. Love those. I always do my own meditation and then I make a really strong cup of coffee or tea. Ah, I ah. love it. But what was your thought? So after he dropped that pen on the floor, um, which I'm thinking it's a wooden floor, right? Correct. Right. So you're jolted out of your sleep and the first thought is, motherfucker. Just kidding. What was the first <laughs> thought? So the first thought was, what the heck was that? And then yeah. okay, I'll go back to sleep. And then I was like, nope, not going back to sleep. I'll get up and start my day. Oh, yeah, and just roll with it. You know, I'm finding, especially with everything we've gone through in the last couple of years, life is very unpredictable, right? Yeah. I would have loved to have slept a good eight, eight and a half hours, didn't happen, whatever. Like you roll with it and you learn also too, if things aren't going the way you want them to, how do I make it work for me? Great. I'll meditate. Great. I'll go watch the sunrise. So you just make it work. 
So, and this is great for us all to learn. You know what I mean? Like we all have our different scenarios of how we live and where we live and you just, it's not always going to be perfect. So this is great information for us to know like where to take our mind positively so we can keep moving on. Cause that whole thing, you, that could have wrecked your whole day if you weren't somebody who was a positive thinker, right? Well, it's, it's so true. In fact, I was thinking about that right before we jumped on because I had that, I missed a 10 a.m. Zoom because I thought it was 11 a.m. I don't normally do that. Um, and then like everything from trying to get ready, thought I lost my Instagram, eyelashes wouldn't go on. And I'm like, ah! and then it's like, okay, but bring it in because who really cares? Nobody. Right. So yeah. let's be present and make the best of everything. And looking at you right now, no one would ever know you went through 7,000 things that could have gone wrong. Oh. <laughs> Totally, but the coffee turned out great. I will tell you that. Oh, there we go. Listen, our sponsor highlight today is Del Pozo Jewelry and Life Transformation Strategist. Del Pozo Jewelry is spiritually inspired by unique gemstones, pearls, and an understanding of what this can signify to the wearer. The designer's trips to Bali were a huge inspiration, and she loves to create jewelry that is unique and one of a kind. Working with gold, diamonds, pearls, and opals, they are her absolute favorite. You can find her stunning jewelry at Del Pozo Jewelry on Instagram and Facebook and on the website delpozojewelry.luxury. For some highly recommended life coaching by Tanya Del Pozo, you can please visit the website tanyanewbold.com. And if you mention Tea with Gwen, you'll get yourself a little 15% discount on either of these fab sponsorships. So thank you very much, Tanya. Thank you, Gwen. My pleasure. Oh, you are so welcome. Let's go back to where you were born and all of the stuff that goes with that, shall we? Because you have a very unique and special story. You were born in England, which is the same as me. Yes. And you were born to parents that then, boop, boop, go ahead. Well, my parents were 20 and 19. They were boyfriend and girlfriend, but she got pregnant. He freaked out. And she then realized that she could not take care of a baby. So I give her so much credit for choosing to follow through and have me. I was placed in a foster home and put up for adoption. And my mom and dad, so my father, my adoptive father was from Yorkshire, so English. My mom's American. They fell in love, got married, moved to England. My mom couldn't have children, so they put in for adoption and they wanted a girl. I was the first girl to come along in a year. So I was in the foster home for about six and a half weeks or the, the orphanage, as they called it then. And then I was adopted. We lived in England till I was two and a half. Then we moved back to Michigan. Wow. You know, like a lot went on in your life. And you actually, you know, I know you've come to like a conclusion of it today, but there's been a journey with that, right? I mean, you didn't know your you didn't know your birth mom for Correct. most of your life, and it's been a recent um, a recent connection, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. The last couple of years, in fact, right when the pandemic began, I actually found her in England, and you reached out to her. How? I well, I had an agency. I literally went through the internet, found an agency that was highly revered on Trustpilot, and they found her within three weeks. And I'll never forget. In fact, our children were still at the primary school that they went to, and I dropped my daughter off and was driving and got a phone call. And they said she's alive, and I remember exactly where I pulled over, right off of Balboa, and I just was like, "Oh wow." And so then what they do, it's a very interesting process. They have to confirm everything and then they send her a letter. And if she doesn't respond, they send it again, certified after 30 days. So she still doesn't respond. They're like, game over. She doesn't want to do it. So they sent my mom the letter and she actually did respond and said, yes, I will connect with her. And then we began writing back and forth on email. So now I've learned the story that I actually was created in love and it just was not right, the correct timing. But I also believe there are no mistakes. I was meant to come here. I'm meant to be here. I was meant to have the mom and dad I had. And it's been quite a fantastic journey. Not always easy. My father was a very severe alcoholic for many years. And yet the, the kindest, most wonderful man when he didn't drink. Mm -hmm. Because of that, my mom suffered some manic depression. And so we went through a lot of different things when I was growing up 
And then I moved to California from Michigan when I was 21 to become an actor <laughs> and came out here and that took a moment. So I got into beauty pageants and, you know, shocker, did all that for a while <laughs> and eventually did modeling and went into acting. And that's how you and I met actually yeah. a long time ago was modeling. Yeah. So I love all of the different things I did, but I actually do believe all of the acting and the public speaking that I went to college for and everything really was to prepare me for who I am today. Mm -hmm. And I loved acting and I do love acting and I'm a really good actor, but what I didn't like about it is what I made it mean to me. It was pick me, pick me, I'm good enough. And if I didn't get picked, I was devastated. Mm -hmm. And I realized it was a very unhealthy relationship for me personally, because it was based on ego. Mm -hmm. It was how I, I equated my self-worth. Mm -hmm. And interestingly enough, when I had my daughter, I suffered very severe postpartum depression, which I was not expecting. And through that process, realized that there was not enough information and wanted a documentary to be created, which it has been, When the Bow Breaks, a documentary about postpartum depression. It's available on iTunes, on Amazon Prime, and on our website, whenthebowbreaksfilm.com. But with that, I became a creator, producer. My testimony's in it. I'm in it. Zero ego. And I really went, oh, hold on. I had no attachment other than I want this to help women, mm -hmm. mamas, families. And that's when I realized, oh, this is where I need to be. Being Not of service, others. being of service to others. Yes. Do you think that um, your uh, dealing with how the industry is as an actor um, and how fragile you were at that time from, you know, going through what you went through as a child, having an alcoholic father, having a manic depressive mother, having, um, I mean, I'm, I'm thinking at that time you were an adult, a young adult, you, you knew you were adopted at that point. And like all of the feelings that come from that, um, now having to deal with this industry, um, do you think that that was a, a big effect on how you were, ex, you know, able to accept or not accept how this industry is. Absolutely, Gwen. I mean, this industry is um, not an easy one. And it's not for the faint of heart, as you well know, because you're in it too. Mm -hmm. You have to have a very, very strong constitution. Now, I do believe there are many actors that look at this no different than if they were an accountant, a doctor, different thing. It's like, it is their job. They love what they do. They're talented. And at the end of the day, they're fine. They're not looking for the approval. But I will say the majority of the people in this industry usually do come from some sort of trauma in their life. And they are looking for acceptance because maybe they weren't accepted by their family, their friends, their small town, wherever they came from. And let's face it, when you do a play, when you do a movie, when you do a TV show, a commercial, you bond very quickly with like-minded beings. Yeah. And it's this amazing feeling that you're like, oh my gosh, I found my people. But the sad part is when the project ends, so does that bond for the yeah. most part. Yeah. So then you're left like, oh, that was so great. Now I'm just sitting here. Ah, we are my friends. Totally. <laughs> so, you know, we do. It's okay, okay. though. <laughs> so I good. love that you dropped your pen too. Let's just talk <laughs> about that. It must be a theme for there's today. A, there's a theme for the day. <laughs> but no, it's a, it, you know, it's a remarkable industry. I watched the Tonys the other night and I was just like, oh, like want to be up there and, you know, tap dancing to Music Man with Hugh Jackman because I was in that in college. You know, I Aww. love it. I love yeah. the industry. So I have nothing but love for creative artists because especially with what we've gone through in the pandemic with everything, all of the, the talk and the negativity, the PTSD, which let's face it, all of us have experienced some form in the last couple of years. I think looking at a beautiful piece of art, whether it be painted, a beautiful singer like you are and talented actress who can sing a song that melts our heart, 
watching a movie. I finally went to the movie theater after two and a half years the other day. I went What'd to, you see? What'd you see? I saw Jurassic World Dominion and oh, it was so good, good, right? And I was in a vibrating chair, which oh was my God. And a half. I need to know where that that vibrating chair that would is. be Northern California, but <laughs> it was it was so fun and I was so enthralled. So the thrill of going to a movie, the thrill of being in an art centered business, it reminds us of the uniqueness in the world versus all of the other things where we are tried to be put into like a certain small box, correct? Yeah. So I love being able to be exposed to that, being a part of that. I love helping people for that reason, because the truth is every single one of us deserves a life that we love mm -hmm. and for it to be fulfilling just because we were born. Just because, yeah. It really is. And so many people have a story as to why they don't get to do or they don't deserve. And if you ever want to have a fantastic read, read about Oprah Winfrey and her background, mm -hmm. because if anyone shouldn't have made it, yeah. it's Oprah. And she, to me, is such a phenomenal woman. Look at what she's done in the world. So it's very important to know that it is our decisions, not our conditions that create our life. I hope you all heard that. You mm -hmm. want to say it again? It is our decisions, not our conditions that create our life. And I love this, the word decide in the Latin terminology is to cut off all other possibilities. So you can change your life in the blink of an eye or the snap of the fingers once you decide. You absolutely can. And see, this is why you guys need to listen to my tea with Gwen, because we have people like Tanya on here spitting <laughs> wisdom that you can take with you every day. Thank you for the compliment because I forgot that I'm supposed to sing for you in the beginning of our episode and not at the end. <laughs> so let's let me give you my little opening. Yeah. Oh, please do. You're here, I'm pleased, and I really dig your company. Ill style, ill smile, ill peace mentality. I love it. I have to tell you as the audience, sorry, moving my foot, which probably moved the camera. I had the pleasure of listening to Gwen and her stunning daughter, Monique, mm -hmm. sing a cappella, a Christmas song. And oh my God, just saying it now brings back that emotion. This is why I love artists. You two were standing on a staircase and you sang this and I just had tears rolling down my face. No. It was two angels singing. It was so... I, Gwen, you are a superstar with your oh, singing. Thank you. And, you know, do not give it up because you deserve to be out there in that full capacity because you're so talented. Thank you very much, Tanya. And, you know, you never forget how people make you feel, you know, and that is something that I always want to do. Like whatever it is out of my talents and creativity, I always want to make sure people have a feeling that they remember from me, obviously a positive feeling, <laughs> you know, <laughs> just like you do for me with your words, you know, it's a positive feeling. And in those moments, and when we go for our walks and we discuss what's going on yeah. with life and, and you're giving me advice, like I never forget certain feelings. And so, yes, let's keep going. Let's keep giving all our listeners the feelings. Um, you, so we went from where you were born to coming to, uh, California. Um, you were an actor, you ended up getting married to a beautiful man <laughs> did, who I still love dearly. And we just celebrated 24 years. Congratulations. 24 Thank years, you. people. What? Yes. <laughs> it's incredible. And you have a beautiful daughter named Ava, who is now 13 years old, but uh -huh. When you first had her and, you know, you're thinking just like every other young woman out there who's, you know, they've got, they've had their dream wedding, they've got their dream man. And then it's like, next it's the baby. And you guys, you know, worked hard to have this beautiful pregnancy and then this baby come out and then what happened? So when I, uh, my husband is younger than I am. So when I was 40 years old is when he said, I think I want a baby. And I was like, what now? What do you mean? I didn't think we were going to do that. So I 
because I was adopted, I had done a genomic profile when I was 39. And I was told you cannot do fertility drugs, your body will metabolize them into cancer. And I was Ooh. like, Oh, yeah, that's, you're like, that's enough. I'm good. Okay, thanks. Uh, Bye. 100%. <laughs> so we tried for two years, and it did not happen. And so I will never forget, I said a prayer. And I said, you know, what, God, if you want me to have a baby, you're going to have to make this happen because it is not happening. And I literally thought, yeah, that that ship has sailed. So then we took a trip to Thailand. So literally one night in Bangkok, it's not <laughs> an 80s song, just saying. <laughs> and when we came back, I found the stars out- stars aligned in many different ways. <laughs> yes, they did. And so I found out I was pregnant. Couldn't have been more excited. The same day I found out I was pregnant, my, fu- my husband found out he had chicken pox. <sighs> poor guy. <laughs> and he was, he was like, it's okay. I just can't be around older people and pregnant people. I, I was like, well, uh, hello, hello, babe. Didn't, I wasn't going to tell you over the phone, but guess what? So I had a very healthy pregnancy, but about four and a half months in, I found myself on the kitchen floor, hysterically crying, sobbing, snot coming out of, you know, every facial orifice you can imagine. And I was like, what is going on here? So what that was is actually antenatal depression. Now, I am not someone who had depression previously. I had no idea what was wrong with me, but I did start going to therapy. I'm a firm believer if something's not working and you're not feeling okay, talk to someone, get some help, whether it be a therapist, a friend, a professional help. Agreed. A hundred percent. Yeah. So I went through the rest of my pregnancy, had my beautiful daughter and I had a scheduled C-section, I had a very, very rough recovery. Again, I don't do well with medication. The epidural epidural threw me into six and a half hours of violently shaking, freezing cold, throwing up. They're trying to put a baby on me, telling me to breastfeed. I mean, it was so hard. And I went through the rest of that time, came home, and now baby blues usually will last up to two weeks. If it goes beyond that, you have to start to pay attention to that. Mine really started to kick in in three weeks and it ended up going into post- postpartum depression, which also had postpartum anxiety. So every night when it would start to get dark, I would go into anxiety because I knew I wasn't going to get a full night's sleep. I knew my daughter was going to need to be fed. I knew yeah. that. So it's anxiety. I, it's just like the, the thoughts of what you're going to have to take care of and you yeah. don't really want to, and you don't really feel ready or capable of, right? Absolutely. And you should and, feel okay to say, I, I'm, this is coming on. I'm feeling this. And this is when I need someone to step in to help, right? You know what? And I love that you're saying that, Gwen, because absolutely. And the problem is we are all trained that life is supposed to be perfect once I have this baby right. and everything's great. And I can, I, and you should just be able to deal with this. Yes. And it's not just so people know one in five women experience some form of perinatal mood disorders and one in 10 men also experience some form of perinatal mood disorder. And what people don't know is there's actually nine levels of perinatal mood disorders. Now, antenatal depression, baby blues, postpartum depression, postpartum anxiety. Then you go into PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, disorder, which we've all, again, experienced some form of in the last two years in the pandemic. Then it can go into obtrusive thoughts and parent let me see obtrusive thoughts and that's where you're having visions Mm -hmm. that it does not mean you're going to act on them so again if this happens to anyone mine was throwing my daughter off the balcony oh yeah yeah yeah. and it was and then the guilt and the shame that you feel by having those thoughts so it's really really i think that really we need to let people know to share it's okay to share and you know what i've noticed on social media because i you know follow quite a few people and you know, people are sharing more and whether it's because they feel safe to do it because they're behind their phone or their computer or however they're sharing, it's about sharing. Like stop assuming that, stop assuming what you just said, that things are supposed to be perfect, what they're supposed to be. Like there's no supposed to anything because we're all unique individuals that experience things very differently. Um, Mm -hmm. To go with what you're saying, I also remember And I don't think I ever shared this with anybody because I thought I was supposed to be fine. And I also had something to prove being a teen mother with Monique that, um, you know, I had a mom that was a labor and delivery nurse. So thankfully I was able to 
actually say to her with Monique having colic, I'm going to need you to come and get this baby because she's been crying for three hours straight. And I just want to throw her out the window. Mm. And I said that at 18, I remember, yeah. and she got up immediately and was like, no problem, you know, but like, yeah. you know, those happen, you know, and I think they happen to more people like you're saying than they don't. And we have to know that each, each other as women and men too, be there for a human, be Absolutely. there. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you know, it's, it's, so hard because different cultures handle things differently. Um, so in China, they have a thing called sitting moon. Sitting moon is where the mom does not even leave the bed for 30 days. I don't even oh, think she's supposed to shower. Lovely. I know. And they I don't take know about away. that. Yeah, I know. I don't know about that. <laughs> She but, needs to but, shower. No, no, I know. <laughs> but like they bring her food, they bring the baby, they take the baby and they allow her. So it's the cycle of the moon, which by the way, there's a full moon tonight. It's yes. a cycle of the moon to help the body heal because it's not just the nine months. People don't understand that actually takes nine more months for all of your organs and everything to go back to normal. Yeah. So it's not just you have that baby and the process is done. And, and, you know, unfortunately, celebrity ship doesn't always help because they you see these women who are back to their size zero within two weeks, four weeks. They're showing only the pictures on Instagram where they're smiling and life is great. So everyone assumes after they've that, also done all the filters and apps, by the way. So, yeah, well, I was going to tell <laughs> know you that know that <laughs> when you see a good picture of me on Instagram, trust me, that's picture number 57 with a few apps and filters involved. Okay. Exactly. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm rather be upfront about it, but yeah. it's very dangerous because if you don't know that you look at someone's life and you're like, Oh, their life, look at their life. It's yeah, so look at what they've done with their body. Look at what, how they look and their skin and their hair. And they're able to get their makeup done. Girl, please. That's, that's an app. She went on the app and she put her makeup on yes. on the app afterwards. She's put herself down to make herself skinny. Like there's so many things you can do. And it's kind of so taken over things. that world where, you know, we were, you know, as models, you know, there was this time when it was like, let's stop showing that the, this is what a woman's image should look like, right? They, they shouldn't be yeah. a size zero. And it's the same thing, but we're now doing it on social media. So I do, I do believe that there are women out there now that are like more free. I'm more free now to, yeah. to just give what I am when I am. And then when I am dressed up, I'm like, Hey, I'm feeling myself today. Here we are, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and I do believe you should celebrate yourself too, but know yeah. that there is a reality in, in all of this. Now I want us to be able to share with our listeners where they can find your documentary, because all of this information, it's an incredible documentary. I found it on Amazon during the pandemic it was Amazon prime, right? Correct. And um, I was just enthralled with all the information. Yeah. You had Brooke Shields on there, uh, giving she information. But you had, it. Yes. yes. Um, I don't know if you want to speak more on it with who else was in there, but the stories that were shared were so compelling. And mm -hmm. some, some of them can be a little like, you're like, wow, this poor girl was going through so much, but please share a little bit more so we know where to find it. Great. I'm going to back up just momentarily only because I want to finish talking about the nine levels that there okay. is also perinatal bipolar, mm. which can be a form of main mania. It can be one of two things. Either you have so much energy, you don't sleep, ah, you're on top of like crazy manic, or you can't get out of breath, out of bed. Like you're depressed. You don't want to take care of the baby. So that is another form that one I did not have. Um, okay. And then the last one being perinatal psychosis, postpartum psychosis. So that one is actually affects about one in 1000 women. It usually happens between one to three weeks. And if you are having any thoughts of harming yourself or your baby, please reach out to postpartum support international. They have a warm line that you can call or text. Someone will get back to you, call your healthcare provider, talk to your spouse or partner, talk to a friend, do not sit with those feelings and try to navigate that yourself because with help, you will be okay. It's when we don't reach out in that nobody knows and that's where it can grow from there. So I just wanted to touch on that very quickly. Thank so you. Once, yes. Once I went through all of mine, I read Brooke Shields book, Down Came the Rain. That's when I could put a name to what I was experiencing because I had no, I thought I was crazy before that. I just mm. thought like, oh, mm. wow, I've, I've lost it. Mm -hmm. And once I understood what it was, 
I chose not to go on any medication. Now, again, I'm going to tell you that probably was not the smartest choice. I was very anti, you know, holistic me, blah, blah, blah. I probably suffered way longer than I needed to. So if you are suffering, do not be afraid to take the medication. You will come off of it again. Your baby will not be harmed, but get help. I did it through 5-HTP and rosehip oil, which acted like a natural Prozac. And by five and a half months, I was out of it. But what I experienced was I couldn't find information on it. So I knew there needed to be a documentary. Right after that, I was interviewed by Jamie Lynn Littman for a documentary called Die Trying About Actors. And I loved her. And she had a four month old and she was such like, she is such a good director, very smart. She knows what she wants. And I said, I have an idea for a documentary and I want you to direct it. And she was like, oh, well, sweetie, I, I didn't have it. You know, I've got a four month old. I'm okay. But I'll tell you what, I'll put a post on a mommy blog and let's see what happens. She called me 24 hours later and she said, I have over a hundred responses of women willing to give their testimony. You are onto something. Oh, wow. And that's where it began. And then we were joined by Lindsay Gerst and she actually is the through line of the documentary, a lot about her journey and everything she went through her husband's interviewed in it. And she is phenomenal. And so the three of us work together to create this. And my goal was to get Brooke Shields and because of my fabulous neighbor, Amy Brenneman, she was friends with her and Brooke narrated it and executive produced it. And again, it's available in 200 countries and six languages. And I'm now finishing up my memoir on my, my own experience, as well as the experience of creating the documentary. So it's a very important film. It's very vital. If you have a child, are going to have a child, or you know of someone who's going to have a child, please recommend it, watch it. I will say trigger warning. There are parts of it that are very hard to watch, but I will tell you just because you see this, it does not mean it will happen to you, but it is very good to be aware of what yes. can be. Yes. Amazing. And I am, I'm just so proud of you for knowing who you are and knowing, you know, what you can do, what you can accomplish. And you, you set out to do it and you got that done. And now you're able to speak about it around the world. What I want to know is let's, let's let's go into your process of how you take care of yourself physically um, and how, yeah, you get your mind right. Um, I do know that you meditate. Um, and you know, I know that you do affirmations, but like, give us a little bit more details of how you take care of your physical and, and mind wellness. Well, I actually, thank you. I do. I took me forever to learn how to meditate. Jennifer Schaefer, who's Jen, the alternative, she's a yeah. phenomenal intuitive healer. Follow her. She's been trying to get me to meditate for years. And she finally gave me a very simple meditation that is phenomenal. I start with gratitude then forgiveness, whether it be myself or someone else, then why do I feel that way? What is the lesson? Abundance. I then say a prayer for the world. I thank God for all my blessings and wash away anything that should not be there. And I love starting my day that way. I um, am not a big breakfast eater. So I drink a very strong cup of coffee with heavy cream and I will never give it up. <laughs> no matter what. And you say, no, dairy. I'm having my heavy cream, yes. but then what I try and do is eat like a hard boiled egg protein for lunch, healthier dinner, stay away from the carbs. But listen, if I want to have some pizza on the weekend, because I want to, you no will. problem there. Yeah. I, I enjoy, I just recently learned uh, of some really awesome Indian recipes for like boiling fruit with cardamom and cinnamon stick and cloves and and that helps your respiratory your skin if you put cucumbers and parsley in your water it gives you collagen it, it's a natural diuretic so these fun little things to break it up and i try to do that very much throughout the day but most importantly it really is mindset being gentle with yourself being aware that we have a mind but we are mm. not our mind our right. mind is an organ just like our eyes our mouth, our hands. And so our mind really has not evolved much in the last 100,000 years. So it's still looking for the saber tooth tiger to keep us alive, but there's no tiger. So guess what that means? Bills, like the pandemic, going out of your house. So all of these things in your mind is really just trying to protect you. 
But if you listen to it, good luck getting your life going because you won't move. So you have right. to very much be like, thank you for sharing. Yeah. All is but well. No, no. Bye bye. Yeah. No, no. And yeah. It's wonderful to meditate, manifest, have gratitude, of course, but you have to be in action. Yeah, and yeah. I don't care if it's one small step, if you want to lose weight, but you can't walk around the block, walk down to the end of your driveway today. Maybe tomorrow, walk past the end of your driveway and yeah. work up to it, but be gentle and compassionate and everything you do. But look at the fear, acknowledge it. And sometimes you have to pause and that's cool but then start moving. Right. Start moving. So you're a walker. You like to do walking, right? I love to do walking and hiking. I've never been a gym rat. <laughs> it's just not my jam. Right. I do love classes, yoga or hot yoga, which I still want to get back to. Yeah. Loved hot yoga, but the thought of being in a room, breathing in with a bunch of people that I don't really want to get COVID. I so. know. I know. It is scary for me too. I'm like, it's hot breath. Listen, nobody likes hot breath anyway, but like, oh, like we're going to be in a room right. with hot breath with, with the likelihood that somebody's got COVID. It's like, it's still, the numbers are still high. No, we know it's not fatal anymore. Yay. Correct. But Correct. yeah, no, I don't want to get sick, you know? So Either. I hear you on that. Yeah. So I find other ways. I love to go out in my yard. I have a beautiful yard. I find it's very important to ground yourself. Take your shoes off, get in some grass. It pulls the electromagnetic waves out of your body. It grounds you. Look at the sunshine, get some vitamin D, look at a bird, look at a flower and just find gratitude for what is. Keep it simple, keep it small. And that is the best way to stay present and to stay grateful. I'm just smiling because it's like, you know, you know, I love my wonder women of the world and you're one of my wonder women and like thinking about you standing on the earth and the electromagnetic waves going through your feet while your hands are like out, <laughs> like in your wonder woman pose to the, to the yes. sky, like, you know, like it's, it's a great image. So I'm like, yes, do that. I'm going to think of myself. I'm going to think of you when I get myself out there doing I that. I love it. I love it. Well, here's the neat thing is I've been studying different modalities for 25 years and I'm actually going into an intensive so that I have my credentials from the International Coaches Federation because I also work with corporations and do a lot with perinatal mood disorders. And the information I've learned is actually it is for all of us. So the more mm. I can share, the more all of us can help each other. We raise the frequency of the planet. It does not have to be a daunting, horrible place because the not. gifts that I have found are actually available to every single one of us. I'm not any more special than anyone. I've just mm. learned some of these things. So I love teaching them for the same reason. I know. And I love that you're like that. And I, it inspires me to be a better person every time I'm around you, because it, I want to be able to share and you have to learn how to share and you teach me how to share because of how you share with me. So thank you. Oh my gosh. Thank you. Yeah. So I've got some Gwen fire questions for you. All right. Yes. Okay. So rom-com or horror flick? rom-com I can't do horror I used to do horror but now you like you put the ring on and I'm like oh I can't <laughs> it triggers too much anxiety rom-com 100 million percent <laughs> which is going to take us to our next one worst fear still spiders big fuzzy <laughs> spiders I gotta tell you that one and then my other odd fear is um a vision of the car driving off the cliff plunging into the ocean don't know why Whoa. but yeah that one um, freaks me out. What is your biggest indulgence? Ooh, biggest indulgence, definitely a good slice of pizza. I love me some pizza. And then I put Parmesan cheese. I put the hot peppers on it. I just, oh, good pizza. So it's a pepper. cheese pizza? Pepperoni. Oh, pepperoni, the real deal. And I actually like anchovies, which flips most people out. <laughs> Anchovies are, are fishy, right? There's a yeah, fish. they're little fishies. But they apparently have really good protein. They're so good and they're salty and they're great on a pizza. Yeah. Okay. Um, most used emoji. Oh, for me, it's, <laughs> there's one of two. It's either the prayer one or it's the one where she's going like this. <laughs> for sure. It's those two. I'm like forever like, oh, I can't believe that. I 
know, I know. I love it. I love it when you send me that because I'm like, I get it, girl. I get it. <laughs> like I have it in my own avatar and then I use the, the little one as well. <laughs> yes, all around you. What is your favorite time of day? I love first thing in the morning when I get up in my, by myself. And, and you have your coffee. <laughs> Yes. And, be still. and then I love evenings. I'm not a big lunch girl, breakfast girl, but I love a good dinner. I love settling in for the evening, knowing the day is like all the accomplishments and just relaxing and having fun. I love the weakest link. I swear to God, I, I still think I should be on that show. I love answering those questions. Questions. You know, I'm going to add one more just because it's you and me. Um, because, and I'll tell you why. Because okay. you told me to find a song that pumps me up, right? Every time I'm about to do something. And I'm still, I still keep trying to find one song because I love so many songs. But um, uh -huh. I like the Eminem, you only get one shot. Do not miss a chance to glow because opportunity comes once in a lifetime, yo. So yep. I like, I like that one. So what is your favorite pump it up song? Well, it's, I have many, okay. but the one I'm going to talk about my latest one is Rufus du Soul mm -hmm. and is on my knees and it is just it's a little bit electronic which I've always been that girl and it is just a song that gets me going or underwater which I played when I did the group session that you came to like I love music that just inspires me moves me and things that get me fired up and music because music again is frequency so that's why we feel and we are affected by music because it actually can shift our own frequency well so it lifts our endorphins good. yes it absolutely lift our, lifts our endorphins yeah yes so i'm gonna say to every listener out there find your favorite pump it up song for yes. yourself and when and you move need your it, body move, and your, move your body, body. tap your right. body let yourself know you're alive yes um okay so i always find a beautiful quote that matches whoever i'm talking to so this one is from brene brown i adore brene brown i love her um, it is vulnerability is not winning or losing. It's having the courage to show up and be seen when we have no control over the outcome. Oh, I love that. And I feel like that is so you. Mm, thank you so much. I will tell you, and I want to tell anyone out there, whatever you've gone through in your life, I love saying this, your mess is your message. Sometimes mm -hmm. we go through things and it seems so horrific and very unfair at times. But depending on how you view it, and if you choose to impart knowledge to others, it actually can become one of your greatest blessings and a turning point in your life. I had no idea that I would end up speaking on perinatal mood disorders, that I've created my Sozo heart, this beautiful heart about mama and baby and depression. And the goal with this, guys, is like the breast cancer awareness ribbon, that you wear it. She wears, if you and I are both wearing it, we look at each other and we know we're tribe. So I want yeah. to create more of a community. I want to take the stigma and have it shine into something as a warrior, yeah. right? As a wonder woman yeah. to say, I survived this yeah. and I am proud of it. I'm creating a candle. That and I am here for you it. too. I am here for you too. And we are here for each other. Yeah. So all of the things I'm doing, creating a candle to target depression and grounding, my memoir, the documentary, the jewelry, it is all because of this, what I thought was the most horrific thing I could have ever gone through. And it turned into something hor horrendously beautiful. <laughs> yes. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> um, you can always catch me on uh, my IG. It's Gwendolyn. I wear my Del Pozo jewelry 24 seven. I just got a new G you guys. You can see that that's for me. And then these three underneath are my children. So that's me protecting my three kids right here. And I love it. And also yeah. too, I have to throw out there that the beautiful, fabulous host, Miss Gwendolyn is my main model for Del Pozo jewelry, because please look at her. Oh, no thank you. That. The best photo shoot ever. Well, thank you. So I'm so honored to have had you on here, Tanya. Thank you very much for all of your belief in me and for your share that you give to everybody else with your love in all that you do. Can't wait to see more to come. Can't wait to see your next uh, speech out there. And I, you know, I'll be there clapping in the crowd. Thank you, my love. Thank you so much for having me on. And please, if anyone needs to book a chat and wants to find out more what I do, just book some time with me on tanyanewbold.com. Love it.